Hey, warm welcome to our Success Under Construction career series where we follow the journey of industry leaders amidst career success. Here at the Australian Institute of Business, we have a simple mission to transform the lives of everyday professionals through those career enhancing credentials. And in being part of the AIB community, we are surrounded by people who have said yes to doing something that moves them closer to where they want to be. So we talk about the MBA, and for those unfamiliar with AIB, it's the heart of what we do, as the, not the end goal, but the catalyst to get you closer to where you want to be in your professional arena. And our intent with this career series is to provide you with tangible advice to get you a little closer to your North Star. I'm your host, Dr. Alicia Stanway, Senior Lecturer and Industry Engagement Manager here at the Australian Institute of Business. In this webinar, aptly titled, When the Arts and Technology Collide, we're featuring the founder and CEO of the world's first online theatre and virtual reality experience, Theatrix. Jamie Harding, welcome. Lovely to be here. Hello, everyone. It's an exciting time. The state of play for the webinar from here is we're going to be talking about your building blocks for success, namely the grit to stay true to one's North Star and the importance of surrounding ourselves with people that raise us up, whether they're supporting us or filling our knowledge gaps. And look, we are quite aptly inspired today by the gorgeous Julia Gillard, another first, the first Australian uh, woman to serve as, as Australia's Prime Minister. So we have a little treat. We're going to kick off with a video, so let's kick off. All right, Jamie, tell us more about Theatrix. Yeah, well, Theatrix is a, a streaming service for the arts, music, and entertainment. So offering a diverse array of uh, content in that live performance arena. So everything from theater performance through to circus, through to concerts like pop concerts and the likes, all in one place. So uh, the world of live performance entertainment at the touch of a button. It's really incredible. You know, we met, for the first and last time, 15 years ago, here in Adelaide, a local acting agency. You were a teacher and an actor, yep. myself as a performer. And probably like you, musical theatre, music absolutely fills my soul in a way that nothing else does. And so when I attended your innovation webinar and heard about the concept of theatric, I was hooked. Not just the business idea remarkable, but you were really tapping into a market that is so rich and ready for this. Absolutely. I mean, it's interesting. I was talking to a friend the other day about uh, theatrics and I didn't realise that they were uh, a big musical theatre uh, buff and fan. Um, they were a secret fan. Um, and, you know, they've been still trying to tap into on YouTube like bootlegs of recordings of Broadway performances. I do and that. they're so frustrated, <laughs> though, because, of course, it's illegal, right? And so they're only up there for a, a couple of seconds or whatever, and then it's always taken down. And so once he, he grabbed the concept of theatrics, he said, this is going to change the world. No doubt. So as an actor... An executive producer, you are well ingrained in the theatre and musical uh, theatre industry. No doubt you've had multiple light bulbs across your career, but is there any standout light bulb moment that you can pinpoint? Yeah, well, for, for theatrics, it, it was multiple. It wasn't just one. It was multiple light bulb moments that all collided to create a giant light bulb. Mm. Um, and that was um, in 2018, uh, so five years before then, I was uh, working towards uh, a production, a show that I was producing and directing called In the Pines, 
which was the world's first theater and virtual reality show of its kind. So it was a part theater, part VR show. So the audience came in, experienced the show in the round. And in the second half, the whole audience donned VR headwear and stepped right. further inside the story. And it was during that because the word innovation in the arts really does, it's a buzzword that gets thrown around, mm -hmm. but there's not many artists that are truly willing to jump ahead and to take true risk and to truly innovate. Um, so that show garnered national and international attention uh, with the innovation that I was bringing to the sector. Uh, but also at the same time, that show was being worked in regional Australia. And for most uh, people in remote and regional Australia, they miss access to some of the big shows mm. because they don't travel or tour to the regions. Mm. So that was another little light bulb. Mm. Also at the same time in 2018, there was a production of Julie Tamel's uh, of A Midsummer Night's Dream. Now, Julie Tamel was the first female uh, director to win a Tony Award. Uh, she directed and designed Lion King, the musical. Um, and that show had no intention of travelling beyond its season in New York. It was a million-dollar production that opened this beautiful theatre. Um, and I really wanted to see it, but I couldn't afford the ticket mm -hmm. to go to New York. Mm -hmm. And then you've got, you know, sometimes you go to a theatre and it's like, you know, 200 300 bucks for a ticket. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought, how crazy is it that in today's modern age, I'm missing out on shows that I love because of distance or cost. Mm -hmm. And I thought that's kind of where all those light bulbs moments kind of occurred. Also, there was one more. So there's four light bulb moments. And, and, and the other one comes from working uh, for decades in the arts industry. Mm. And the arts is predominantly reliant on government funding. Mm. So what's been happening over the years is the arts funds have slowly been stripped of funding which has caused, you know, uh, massive issues in, in the arts industry. I'm talking about six years ago, 60 odd professional companies sank overnight uh, through um, gouging of the Australia Council Arts Fund. So also there was the need to create a new model, a new way for artists and companies to monetize their products beyond the current infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So all of that kind of came together in my thinking of creating theatrics. And then I took theatrics into a venture dorm program and um, from there uh, tested it and, and put it through its paces. Yeah, let's delve into that a little bit more around the concept of the North Star. So theatrics, because of those collisions and those light bulb moments, theatrics became your uh, your North Star guiding your vision. But for most of us and for yourself, careers are not linear. Uh, we can't always predict what's going to come ahead. So and success isn't always guaranteed. So how do you stay true to that North Star? Mm -hmm. um, it's always for, for me. It always comes down to the why. Why am I doing what I'm doing? Um, so, you know, even as an artist and as a maker, you know, that is something that has always driven my work. You know, I've always wanted to, that intersection and collision of technology and art has always been in the creation of everything I've done mm. because I've always wanted um, the arts and live performance to remain connected to future and younger generations. Um, but when I was making In the Pines, there was a moment um, I was listening to a lot of uh, audible tapes and things like that uh, for inspiration. And I came across this amazing quote from Steve Jobs, which really resonated with me, mm. which was, and I ad lib it now, but it's, you know, everything around made you. Made it your own. Didn't yeah, you? I've made it my own. <laughs> um, everything around you has been created by people no smarter than you, but you can change it, you can shape it, and you can shift it. And for me, that really resonated and stuck with me because it enabled me, uh, those words of wisdom from Steve Jobs made me look outside of what I was doing and realizing that everything is a construct, but you don't need to accept it for what it is mm -hmm. and that you can change it. If you see a gap or you see something that no one else is chasing, mm -hmm. then you are the one that can create the change. You don't need to accept things as they are and so for me that quote um, enabled me like I said the opportunity to step outside of what I was doing to look at everything objectively and that's when all of a sudden the gaps became very very clear but also staying true to your North Star everything around you has been created by people no smarter than you 
Mm. So it's that empowerment of you and, and the reason why, and that is what keeps me going. So even on mm. the darkest and toughest days, and I, there's been many of those as well, like theatrics um, to date is the biggest uh, business that I've ever tackled. Um, but it's 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 that why every morning getting up and going, I truly believe that theatrics is going to make a difference in people's lives. And even just recently, it's um, we've really started opening up um, to the public about theatrics. And I've been really moved by uh, what audiences are starting to say. So, for example, people with mobility issues who actually can't physically get to theatres who said this is going to change their life or elderly population who normally, you know, are the greatest patrons of live performance who end up in nursing homes and don't have transport or can't get to the theatre who also, you know, so it's all of that kind of feeds that drive and that motivation every single day um, with a little bit of Steve Jobs. Yeah, yeah, like it, I said, that it quote. Hit you, didn't it? Oh, it oh, did. It, it just deep. it cut mm, me deep because yeah. it made me objectively look at everything mm. and realize that yeah, the systems that were in place that were failing, um, and that I could see that were causing me huge frust frustration as an independent artist. Mm -hmm. Like I'm talking huge frustrations, yeah. and it's not just me. Like that that's multiplied um, globally, you know, with um, throughout the arts. And I just, that's when I started to look objectively at the industry and going, right, I can either accept this as the way it is, or I can try to shift it and change it and shape it. Mm -hmm. And so that's where, you know, the theatrics model is really built to, to help artists and um, companies thrive in the new medium. You know, people have ideas all the time, right? But I love that you mentioned it was your why, because People can't replicate that. You know, if, if anyone's familiar, Simon Sinek talks about the golden circle and what it comes down to, it, what lights you up, that unwavering motivation that gets you out of bed every day. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it is because that is what always motivates you. You but, and you, yeah. And and me. It's, it's what keeps me going. It yeah. really does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If anyone's curious to know a bit more about how to find one's North Star, check out Bill George. His 2015 book, find, uh, Discovering Your North Star, is really phenomenal. It's all about being at your or reaching towards your more authentic self where you close the gap between who you think you are and who you truly are. So go check it out, a really phenomenal source. So success is always under construction. We're constantly a work in progress. And I love the concept of Richard Branson continues to inspire me, right? He has dyslexia and he's one of the most amazing visionaries that I've experienced in my time. Mm -hmm. Now, he simply surrounded himself by people with really fantastic academic writing skills to supplement the skill that he didn't necessarily have. Um, so he recognised early on that he had this amazing idea and ideas. He had lots of them. Um, but where he understood where his strengths were and he needed to surround, surround himself by other people to uplift his ultimate idea, um, that's when he realised early on that he could surround himself with amazing people. So I wanted to come back to you. You have your North Star, mm -hmm. you have your vision, and you're also probably noticing that there are maybe some gap knowledge gaps for the own idea to bring theatrics to life. So how do you identify the people that you need to bring in or surround yourselves with and also having the courage sometimes to have those conversations? Yeah. Um, it's, well, part of it, like I said, with my journey was then taking theatrics into uh, a Venture Dawn pro, uh, pro program, which then enabled me to really flesh out the business plan and really mm -hmm. test all aspects of the business. So as part of that, you are uh, under construction, looking at your strengths and weaknesses. Um, and the great thing was uh, throughout that um, we will put in a round robin kind of Shark Tank-esque sort of pitching competition, mm. which was a national pitching competition. And we ended up tipping out, I think it was 90 other startups nationally to win the Gold Envy Award, right. uh, which was a huge honour and something like $47,000 in, in prizes. Um, but also just after that, uh, I knew that the first, the first thing I... I realised was, as Netflix says, content is king. Mm. So, and I knew that if I was to build out the technology, I would be kidding myself if I couldn't convince 
the big players mm. with with the, the major content players to jump behind us and and you know because you've got to have things that people want to watch so as part of that then I entered um, theatrics into it's an initiative by the Australian government called the Austrade landing pads mm. which is an initiative to take market ready startups to some of the biggest tech hubs in the world because of, of course Australia we're so distant mm. from the rest of the world and so I put it in there, and that's a huge application process. And uh, I got accepted, which was amazing. And it was during that time, so I this is all pre-COVID, I got to travel to some of the biggest tech hubs in the world, like mm. uh, for six months, like Tel Aviv, London, uh, Berlin, and New York. And it was during that time that I all of a sudden started to gather the major international content partners and it was during that time that I realized I was onto something incredibly special. But also during that time, I also realized that here in Australia in particular, uh, we have this mentality that we've, we're often very scared to openly talk mm -hmm. about Absolutely. our businesses or our ideas in mm -hmm. fear that someone's going to steal it mm -hmm. and grab it. But actually, in uh, those tech hubs, I started to discover from a global perspective how the global tech industry works. And it's all about opening up and talking. And it's all about, and, and the correlation between um, business and arts for me is it's, it's, it's a no-brainer that they just go hand in hand. Mm -hmm because it's also all about collaboration Absolutely. and finding those people on your team that complement you, that fill those um, gaps, mm. um, that can help elevate and lift your business far beyond your imagination. And so that trip for me really uh, enabled me to see that. And uh, yeah, we started together, you know, even uh, when I was in New York, um, I managed to to snag Bill Campbell as part of my team, mm, who was the former senior vice president of Sony and Universal Music. Um, so he's obviously his knowledge on music and the music industry complements my knowledge on the arts and uh, live performance sectors. Um, and also um, Ariel Vroman, who's a Hollywood producer and director. So, you know, it's like all of those people that can connect you and um have exactly the same passion uh, for your business as yourself, but fill those gaps and those weaknesses. But it starts by, you know, identifying what they are, yeah. putting yourself out there and talking and collaborating and speaking. And it's amazing what happens and how many people, amazing people you can meet around the world that share the same passion for your business and are willing mm -hmm. to stand up and help and support. So that was an amazing trip for me that really kind of helps really set theatrics up, but help um, me with the greatest opportunity for success. I'm really inspired. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And I love the message of collaboration. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really key. You know, yeah. collaboration is key because I, I even say, um, when I was working um, as a theatre director, it's like sometimes the best idea comes from people that you least expect. Um, so you can be in the rehearsal room and you're trying to thrash out a, a problem with a scene or whatever, and then the cleaner walks by and just says, what about this? And you go, that's genius. Like, yeah. that's genius. Yeah. That's the answer. That's the solution. Sure. Um, and it's like uh, I was saying, like creativity, I'm, I'm obviously passionate about creativity and I, I believe businesses thrive on creativity if you think about marketing and all those sort of things but it's like I also use um, the example of the coca-cola employee mm -hmm. who was on the factory floor who looked at the can of coke and went what if we put our name on a can of coke and that was right. one of coca-cola's biggest campaigns and that came from someone that obviously knew the product mm -hmm. wasn't in head office mm -hmm but knew the product deeply and intimately and just came up with a creative idea that all of a sudden became one of the biggest marketing, um, uh, uh, you know, um, programs for Coca-Cola. Mm -hmm. And um, you go, so that's where that collaboration and being open. Mm, the transparency, right? Absolutely, because mm -hmm. you just never know where the, the great ideas are going to come from. Fun fact. Yes. 
Now, how many times, ballpark, have you pitched theatrics? I can't. I've lost count. A lot. A lot. Okay. A lot. Do you, Jamie Harding, have a strategy to get in the mindset before you pitch? Yeah. Um, it's interesting. Um, I like to think when you're pitching, it's um, preparation's key. So, uh, first of all, it's about, you know, the material that you're going in with and, and being confident in what, what you're compiling mm -hmm. and how you're delivering your message. Mm -hmm. um, because you yourself have to be confident in pitching. And so, yeah, there is a mindset thing. Like, you need to go into the zone and see, see again, as a performer with a performance background, I understand that very intimately yeah. and deeply. Um, and it is, and it's that kind of mix of uh, the content that you're delivering um, and knowing that, not just knowing that inside out, but knowing it incredibly deeply in every facet mm -hmm. of your business deeply. Um, but getting to the point where you are confident with what it is that you're delivering, selling or uh, communicating. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a mix of things for me. Yeah. It's preparation mm -hmm. is key as well as obviously on game day, going mm -hmm. in in the zone, yeah. uh, placing yourself uh, in that position to be ready um, and, uh, and deliver. Yeah. Those things can be a given. It's the, you used to be a comedian, right? So yeah. Tapping yeah. into that. Yeah. So I worked, yeah, a lot as a, as a comedian. That's what got me through university, yeah. actually. Right. And with a stand-up set, right, it's, it's all about the material. Mm -hmm. So it's like about getting, mm -hmm. you know, the first three minutes of solid material. So even when I took theatrics into that Venture Dorm Shark Tank style, mm -hmm. I very much built my pitch much like I would a stand-up routine in the fact that I started first with one minute, right, where I could just sit there and pitch mm -hmm. confidently for one minute and communicate theatrics. Then you build it up to three, then to five, mm -hmm. and, and then now, you know, hours. I know you, you can go on <laughs> but, for hours. Absolutely. Yeah, but it's, it's that thing of building it and starting first with the material. Mm -hmm. And part of that preparation was obviously the business plan, all the market research, all that sort of mm -hmm. stuff, which you start to file in. But also the way I like to think of it as well is much like a stand-up set, it organically grows because your business grows. So it's forever moving. It's, a, it's not like, okay, I've, I've got my pitch now, uh, I've got my five-minute pitch down and that's it. Because it's like all of a sudden, what happens if you meet someone mm -hmm. and you've got one minute or 30 seconds in an elevator? You know, you've just, boom, got to switch it pitch. on and mm -hmm. straight away be mm -hmm. there and and um, and connect. So that way I like to think of it as it's an evolving uh, mechanism through which, you know, it continues to evolve. Um, but also uh, the, the most paramount thing is getting confident mm. in what it is that you're doing, saying and communicating. So you got no favourite jacket or, or pin that you wear? Nothing no, like that? No, oh, nothing like that. I was going like to get that. a secret out of you no, today. <laughs> no, no, nothing like that. Just, yeah, just being, um, getting to the point where it's really important. One of my, there's a favourite comedian of mine, which is, who's Eddie Izzard. Um, yeah. And he has a beautiful documentary called Believe. Um, and there's a quote of his that also is a mm. bit of my North Star, which is he says, to be a stand-up comedian, you have to believe you can be a stand-up comedian. Mm. To be an actor, you have to believe that you can be an actor. Um, to be, you know, um, to create a business, you have to believe in the, business. in the business. And I think it's that belief and getting to the point where, where you not only have your North Star, but, yeah, you are just motivated wholeheartedly because you believe that what you are doing is going to change the world or make a difference in someone's life and that's but you've got to believe yeah it comes from the inside out for you doesn't it absolutely oh, ab no well, yeah it has to it has to oh you were going to put your glass down and get, i was get right into it yeah <laughs>
Okay, Jamie, we're going to multitask. So to those joining us live, thank you so much. You would notice on your screen that we've got a chat feature and I do hope you're making the most of that and saying hello and connecting to others here today live. But there's also a Q&A feature. So if you have any questions for Jamie, um, please pop them through. We have the beautiful Associate Professor, Dr. Diane Calendra, Professor of Marketing and Entrepreneurship, who is manning that. Uh, we're going to multitask, so we're going to go throw ourselves into a Q&A. Whilst you had people that filled your knowledge gaps, what skills did you find were the most valuable to upskill in making this venture a reality? Um, most valuable. It's, it's interesting. Again, I think it's about um, those knowledge gaps and, and finding those, those people that help fill that. And everyone parts different points of wisdom. So for me, it was, um, yeah, at first, like Dr. Diane Calendra, uh, we met over coffee. She was one of the first people I actually uh, spoke to about theatrics. And it was her reaction um, and her support that gave me that initial belief that I could, yeah. I could do this. Mm -hmm. um, and, of course, with her marketing background, um, you know, sh she helped a lot with, with that market research. Um, but it was about, like I said, it's about all, all those little gems that you gather along the way that, that help fill mm. in all the pieces of the pie. So that's, it's kind of, it's, that's a hard one to answer mm. because it's, it's, it's like, um, almost like a magpie, like a hunter gatherer, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you gather from yeah, lots yeah, of different going. sources, yeah. uh, that help yeah. kind of feed, feed the pie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah we, you've spoken a fair bit about your North Star. We have a question on how, perhaps how a typical person um, who maybe not has the business idea or really has the career idea down pat yet, how do they identify a North Star? So, you know, there's, a, there's, a, there's an activity in Bill George's work and it's very simple and I'd love to share it with you if you don't mind, where you list down your intrinsic motivations. That are the things that get you out of bed in the morning and really fire you up from the inside out. And then you list your, your capabilities, the things you're really good at, right? Mm -hmm. And the intersection of that helps you identify your sweet spot, what I like to call your sweet spot, and that helps you unravel and get a little bit closer to your North Star. And that's what you've done. You've spoken about the why that gets you out of bed. You, you wanted to revolutionise the industry and you're very innately, unwaveringly driven by that. And you're also darn good at it. Oh, thank you. You and, can stay. And you, like it, <laughs> you've got the networks. You've got the, you're developing the business acumen continuously because we'll come to your launching in a minute. Uh, so what about, does live performance see theatrics as a threat? Good question. Um, at first people thought I was a little bit crazy. Um, so pre COVID everyone thought I was crazy. And then of course I was in New York when COVID hit mm. and Broadway, we're talking to some of the biggest owners on Broadway and they lost, I'm talking like $150 million in the first few weeks of closures. Now you times that the world over and you start to realize just how much the arts have been impacted by COVID. And I know lots of other industries were. But the arts in particular, they always thought that their doors, the venues were mm. going to be open. And so it was unprecedented what, what happened to the, the arts industry. Um, so then, then my phone started ringing hot. Wow. So during the lockdowns, everyone that I was talking to actually started to go, hang on, you're onto something here. Because what I also saw pre-COVID was that the theatre, the arts industry in particular, has been very slow to adopt digital. Sure. Because of that fear, like the, there's, there was this fear in the industry that if we were to go digital, that all of a sudden it would take away from live ticket sales. But actually, all the data and everything shows that it actually does the opposite. So I'll give you, an ex I'll give you a couple of examples. So this is something that also validated uh, theatrics very early on for me. So this is how new the idea of streaming is in live performance. Like, really, live performance and streaming is kind of where um, Napster was with music back in the day before Spotify and everything. Like, it's about to go gangbusters. Um, about 11 years ago, the Met Opera started broadcasting. So they're a major opera company in New York. Mm. Started broadcasting their operas into cinemas, right, mm. uh, um, around the world. And uh, they started pre-COVID, 
um, we're hitting um, like $400 million US in sales from ticket sales alone from, from cinema broadcast. And then the National Theatre followed not long after asking the same question. Well, if opera can do it, well, can theatre do it? And then they started hitting the similar sort of targets. And, and they're not-for-profit um, organisations. Um, and so uh, this is really an emerging sector mm -hmm. uh, for the arts. Mm -hmm. And everyone's starting to find that people are more likely, right, to come to a theatrics, pay their $8 a month. Like if you've never experienced opera, you know, are you going to take a risk and go and spend 300 bucks to see it sure. and not enjoy it? Mm -hmm. Or you come to theatrics, you pay your eight bucks. Wow, I love opera. Then you're more likely to go out and physically buy a ticket. And also, if you look, Lin Manuel, who was the creator of Hamilton the Musical, mm -hmm. right, which um, uh, featured recently on Disney Plus, they got a seventy-five percent increase in subscription in subscriptions mm -hmm. because of yes. Hamilton. And Lin Manuel has actually now come out and broken that myth for the, the live performance sector. Because what's happened is live performance sales for Hamilton went through the roof, went through the roof. Mm -hmm. And it discovered a whole new audience of people that went, oh, I don't know if I'll go see it, to all of a sudden becoming diehard fans. Sure. And of course, nothing takes away from the live performance experience. The live performance experience will always be there. Um, but there's this new, what, what I like to call, it's a hybrid form where it's that live mixed with film. So it's not quite film and it's not live, but it's it, that intersection in the middle, which is a whole new art form, which doesn't detract. In fact, it actually works to help drive further ticket sales. Um, and everything's, everything proves that. So the industry is changing their opinions on that. Yes. So an extension on from that, I want to talk about emerging artists. Now, this question's come from Tyler. And if it's Tyler, who I think it is, hi, Tyler, um, works in the art industry, takes some of the most amazing photos of um, dancers and performers, right? Yep. So um, how about, how does theatric works in terms of being an outlet for emerging artists in particular? Yeah. Um, really good question. So um, we obviously have partnerships with some of the globe's biggest players, um, as well as I myself, you know, the great thing is um, theatrics is artist driven. I'm an artist. Um, I love this industry inside and out. Um, so part of that is actually helping theatrics, I see, will play a great role in helping uh, emerging artists and independent artists in, in, in creating that transition into the digital. So my ultimate plan with theatrics is to get to the point where we can come in and help cover, because to actually capture a show and to do it in a, a quality way, like I'm talking quality, not just like a, a, an iPhone in your bedroom while you play the guitar. I'm talking a quality <laughs> production. It's expensive, <laughs> right? So um, that's what I'm saying in terms of as a model where we can come in and we can work alongside the companies or artists and help with covering some of those costs, which a lot of artists ca cannot afford, um, in order to help artists transition into the digital, um, as well as, you know, making sure that we're offering um, fair pay for every stream. So the way I see it is um, as theatrics really starts to gear up as a commercial model, we're working alongside the industry mm -hmm. in order to prep it up, prop it up, and also for artists to um, engage in new ways to meet new audiences. Um, and, you know, that, again, that's a huge gap. Now, hi, James Dean. We have a, a question around the funding and um, would you recommend securing funding or networking your ideas first to build that group buy-in? And he does say, I do say this with caution as I have experienced sharing proposals without securing the funding to have them then lifted by other projects. Mm -hmm. So um, we all do have our creative inspiration, but need to be a little bit tactical. Any advice for those in a similar position? Yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting it's an interesting one that one uh, because again, in order to fuel a business, you need the funding, mm. 
And how do you get the funding? You have to communicate the business. Mm-hmm. Um, what I started with early on, and this might be, uh, again, help answer the, the question, is we I started first with um, family and friends, like mm-hmm. creating a family and friends consortium uh, with people that I completely trusted, that I said, look, there's this great opportunity, this is what I'm building. And it was phenomenal. Like the response I got from my own instant community was enough to actually build out all, all the, the technology. Then alongside of that, um, there's also lots of grants now that are starting to emerge in business and innovation um, in which you can apply uh, for grants to help fuel your business as well. So that's also something that I was doing because, of course, uh, to begin with, you've got to, you just have to. It's a lean um, a lean approach, a lean method, because it's you at the beginning and trying to, to fuel your, your company. So that was how I kind of tackled it until I then started to get to the point where I knew the company was investable to then be able to start to push it out beyond my networks. So I already had quite a lot of theatrics built before I started taking it out. So that, that was an approach I took, which I hope help, helps answer your questions, which is there's lots of resources that you can use to start to fuel it so that you're trying to be ahead of the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting one. Phil did a bit of a Google search yep. on theatrics and the search engine comes up with magic shop. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, how, what's your thoughts on overcoming how the SSO works? Um, well, so we're coming up to the point where um, I love it, Bill. I love it. Um, <laughs> so I am sending that one through too. Yeah, so, yeah. that's it. Um, no, so we're in the process of all of that. So we're a few weeks, a uh, few weeks away from um, from full launch um, of of theatrics, um, and so all of that. Obviously, you know, I've I've got some really amazing people uh, in in marketing that are going to help with all of that side. Um, as well to to really kind of push all of that that side forward, um, but that's obviously something that uh, we're literally mm. yeah about to press go on in order to to help with all of that side on on the net. So, on that, we know you've been burning the midnight oil. You're working across lots of different time zones, and you're launching Telstra TV in, in what two weeks? Yeah, a couple. Of, yeah, December sixteenth. Yeah, we officially launch. Um, which is incredibly exciting. Um, and it's been a really busy time because yeah, we've got partners all over the world. So I'm working in Australian time zones and London and New York and so all over the shop at the moment, but it's a very exciting time for the company. Curious. Now we're in we're in Adelaide, we're in South Australia. Yeah. You are a South Australian. Yes. Right? Um, Theatrix, is it staying in South Australia? Is that synonymous with, is Jamie Harding staying in South Australia? I wonder. You can interpret that how you like. If they're a New York investor, then <laughs> I'm coming to New York. No, um, uh, Theatrics is, uh, we plan on, on staying here in South Australia. Uh, South Australia is a great place for theatrics because um, South Australia is known globally for its festivals and for its mm. art scene. So theatrics is a perfect home um, for Uh, South Australia is a perfect home for theatrics. Um, Having said that, the plan obviously is uh, to launch first here in Australia and New Zealand. And then, of course, part of my team is international, like I was saying with Bill Campbell and and the likes, who, um, uh, you know, the idea is then to to rapidly scale into the US. Mm -hmm. Um, But the idea is, yeah, uh, theatrics uh, started here. Uh, This is a perfect home for theatrics. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'd love to, to see headquarters stay here in South Australia. Yeah, and we'd love to keep you here too. And yeah, now that you're Australian Institute of Businesses Industry Fellow, we're really remar- uh, really excited and it's just remarkable that you're giving your time to us as yeah, well. Yeah, no, it means it's great. I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled to be here. Now, Diane's got a little something to put on the screen uh, uh, for us, and I want you to tell us a, a little bit more about what is happening in the next few weeks because you are about to launch. You've got about two more weeks of no sleep, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us what's going on. What's next up? Um, yeah. Well, at the moment we're um, yeah we're uh, we're doing a uh, there we are. Diane's got it up there. 
um, an equity crowdfunding raise um, through Swarma, um, which is uh, a site where people can go on and read all about theatrics and invest and be part of the company. Um, and it's one of those things that many hands make like work. Mm. So it's, you know, people can invest for as little as $250, um, but all of that, you know, goes a very, very long way. Um, so we're at the point where, you know, um, today in particular, uh, anyone in the audience, I'm thrilled about the amount of people that have jumped on today. Um, but if anyone out there is inspired by uh, what I'm doing, um, is excited by theatrics um, as a company, then please jump behind me and support um, me and the team because uh, it really does go a long way. And there's a little QR code. Now I feel like I'm going into um, infomercial. <laughs> a little QR code where you can literally hold your phone up, scan it, it'll take you straight to our page. Um, because for all of you, trust me, no matter where you are at your journey, um, you are going to need fuel in that car. And we yeah. are a community and it is all about collaboration. Mm -hmm. And trust me, if you jump behind and help support me, then I will, I'm, I'm your biggest advocate and I'll be there uh, to help you as well. Because that's what it's all about. Um, business mm -hmm. in particular, with what's just happened over the last couple of years, mm -hmm. we all have to rally together mm -hmm. and we all have to support each other. Yeah. Um, and we're to, definitely behind you. And yeah. I know you've got a team of people as yeah, well. Yeah, that's global. it. But it, um, like I said, it truly means the world. And uh, yeah, like I said, in business, we're all in it together. And great things happen when we collaborate. And uh, also, if anyone out there, you know, has uh, needs guidance or whatever, reach out. I'm happy to help and support in or mentor in any way, shape or form. Amazing. Well, we'll thank Julia for the inspiration Absolutely. Today. And yes. Jamie Harding, CEO and founder of Theatrics, completely humbled that you could spend some time with us today and with our AIB community. Um, to all those online or at least watching the recording, really appreciate you taking the time to invest in your professional development. Uh, Jamie Harding, thank you so much. My pleasure and thank you all for attending today and look forward to seeing you all soon. Thank you.